All right, y'all, this is some crazy stuff that's been going on. Oh, my goodness. I just did a podcast for Patreon. Um, so Patreon only podcast. I feel like I I, I, I need to pray more. I, like I, I need to pray after that. And I, that was a very crazy topic all around. Um, talked about the Ryan Garcia stuff and just trying to understand what the heck is going on going on with Ryan Garcia. It's just some wild stuff. Um, if you're interested in seeing that, um, that's on Patreon and it's only going to be on Patreon. I'm doing one podcast per week on Patreon, mainly the stuff that's too out there to post on YouTube or anywhere else. Um, so if you want to become a member on Patreon, it's $1 per month. There is a seven day free trial. So if you want to just finesse it, I have no problem with that. So you could just sign up for the free trial and then you could cancel before the seven days if you want to. Um, and then that way you could just watch the episode to see if, if you, you know, like what we got going on over there. Um, it's very similar to what we do on here. It's not anything too different. Just the topics are a lot more, you know, risky. Um, okay. I've got some more crazy stuff to talk about <laughs> in this video. Um, also I'm recording this podcast the same day that I released the last podcast. So in this podcast, I'm not going to read the comments because there's still a lot of people that haven't left a comment yet. So I want to give more people an opportunity to leave a comment on the lot on the last podcast. So on the next one, I'll double up and I'll read basic, basically two videos worth of comments on the next one. But like I said, same thing applies. Um, I'll try to read, you know, the comments that kind of stick out to me. Um, but if you want to ask a question, if you're dying to ask a question, or if you have a comment, a concern, some pushback. So on the last comment that I read or the last video, I was reading comments. Um, somebody gave me some pushback, which is nice to see. Um, you know, somebody basically said that all I do is drama and all I do is gossip and stuff like that, but they kind of said it in a nice way. Um, so I, I kind of addressed that, but if you have questions, concerns, anything like that, drop a comment or drop a super chat if you want to. Um, that way it, it kind of makes it easier for me to see, um, on there as well. So man, where do we begin with this one? Um, let's do the Ty Tribbett. Ty Tribbett was on the breakfast club and I saw like the first portion of what he was saying and I, it didn't really sit right with me. Um, so I want to watch the full kind of clip from Ty Tribbett on the breakfast club. Let me see if I can find it. He was basically saying that like the church is whack and, um, you know, religion is whack and all this type of stuff. So let me pull this up real quick. Let me see. Ty Tribbett Breakfast Club. Okay, I think it's this one right here. Let's see. I think the institution of church is whack. I mm -hmm. think how church is ran is whack. I think the religious system and structure is whack. I don't subscribe to it, even though I grew up in it, I benefited from it, but I learned that God is not the church. And once right. I realized, whoa, God ain't church. That mm -hmm. uh, For me, you know what I mean? I ain't from the streets, I'm from the church. So that was a huge thing as well. It's in the yeah. Bible, it says you can't even find God in a man-made temple. Why, mm -hmm. why don't we read that though? Mm -hmm. how, how often do you hear that sermon? No, you hear, People, pastors make the people about the church. We got the church name, we church and the church and the bumper sticker, the church. The church, <laughs> the church should be about the people. Yeah, yeah, the church yeah. should be about the people, but yeah. the church makes the people about the church. So all churches now are a move. Uh, I'm going to have to listen to this again because I'm kind of confused. But they're not about the people. They're not about serving and loving the people. Mm -hmm. I think the institution of church is whack. I mm -hmm. think how church is ran is whack i think the religious system and structure is whack i don't subscribe to it even though i grew up in it i benefited from it but i learned that god is not the church and once right. i realized whoa god ain't church that mm -hmm. uh, for me you know what i mean i ain't from the streets i'm from the church so that was a huge thing as well it's in the yeah. bible it says you can't even find god in a man-made temple why, mm -hmm. why don't we read that though mm -hmm. how, how often do you hear that sermon no you hear 
people, pastors make the people about the church. We got the church name, we church, and the church, and the bumper sticker of the church. The church, <laughs> the church should be about the people. Yeah, yeah, the church yeah. should be about the people, but yeah. the church makes the people about the church. So all churches now are a movement, but they're not about the people. They're not about serving and loving the people. Hmm. I, I get what the essence of what he's trying to communicate. I just don't think that's the right platform to communicate those ideas because that's not a platform that has been shown to support Jesus Christ. It's just not. So when you're having those types of conversations, like those, that's, that's kind of like family business. You know what I'm saying? Like there are certain conversations that you have with your family that you wouldn't necessarily have with other people who, who aren't in that dynamic because they don't understand the nuance and they don't understand the essence of what you're trying to communicate. So it's hard to really break that down and really flesh it out to the level that it needs to be, you know, broken down. Um, I, there was a response. There was a response that I saved. Let me play this real quick. There's two responses. So this first response, Pastor Mike Jr., here it is. I heard an interview from Ty Trippett on The Breakfast Club, and I get what he was trying to... Hold on. I don't know if I can do this with the music. Hold on. Pastor Mike Jr. Let me see if I can find this just without the music, because it's going to be an issue. Pastor Mike Jr. Ty... morning i heard an interview from ty Tri why is it all why do they all have music on it like just post the clip just by itself hey what's up everybody oh my goodness gracious did he post this on instagram hold on let me see i'm assuming he posted on instagram pastor mike jr Bro, this is crazy. I just want the video without the music behind it. You know, like we live in this generation where everyone has ADHD. We can't even listen to somebody speak unless there's like a beat behind it. Pastor Mike Jr. Even at church. It's like, bro, we we don't need a uh we don't need beats behind everything. <laughs> I just want to hear what he's saying. Ty Tribbett. Pastor Ty Tribbett. There we go. Um, oh, my goodness gracious, bro. Okay. I guess I just, I'll just play it. I'll just play it. Let's go. Heard an interview from Ty Trippett on The Breakfast Club, and I get what he was trying to say, but he made a statement that was very irresponsible on the wrong platform. He said the church is whack. How can you go on a national platform and totally throw under the bus the very institution that made you who you are? You, sir, had an opportunity to shine God's light, to push people back into the place of healing. But instead, you wanted to feel cool. You could have been a light. You could have told people, man, falling in love with God was the best thing I've ever done. And I found the right church. Go find the right church. You don't know who's going to take that statement and walk away from a church that could have really impacted their lives. My church isn't perfect. There is no perfect church. Just like there's no perfect restaurant. There's no perfect radio show. Everybody falls short. Mm -hmm. I literally met you in church. Meeting you changed my life forever. The church is not whack. The church is alive and well mm -hmm. across all denominations. We're seeing a hunger for God like never before. I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for the church, I wouldn't be here. The devil thought he had me. Mm. Somebody said in the comments. Um, Tanya. Tanya said. Ty Tribbett was completely right about what he was saying. It's about having a relationship with God, not the church. 
And here you go trying to discredit what he was saying, shaking my head. Yeah, but this is exactly what I'm like. You, we have to be very careful how we act amongst non-believers. And that's what the Bible says. We have to be very mindful of our words, our actions when we are amongst non-believers because there are some things that they're just not going to be able to understand. They're going to hear Ty Tribbett talking about how the church is whack and they're automatically going to equate the church to God. And they're going to say, well, oh, God is whack. So I shouldn't be going to church. I shouldn't be seeking God. I shouldn't be seeking Christ. Let me just go back to my old, my old ways. Let me go back to my sin. Let me go back to that lifestyle. There's some people who are going to take it that way. Obviously, you and I are not going to take it that way because we're more mature in our relationship with Christ and we can kind of discern what he was trying to say. But I think his statements on that specific platform was irresponsible because that's not a platform that's going to give him any additional pushback on those statements. Now, granted, I didn't even watch the full interview. Let me see if I can pull it up on YouTube. The Breakfast Club, they be copyright striking. Like, you know how Oprah was giving out cars? That's how they be giving out copyright strikes. So I don't even think I can play it, but let me see if I can finesse it a little bit and kind of get around it. Let me see. Um, Cause I do wanna see where exactly things went off the rails here. I'm a truck driver, I'm telling y'all. You are wonderful, God. I'm trying to find a specific part so we don't have to go all jump around. Finding God outside the church. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the full thing, to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Is there a more? I just want a little bit more context to the clip. Okay. Well, let me play this other clip while I'm looking for it. Um, Let me see. What's this? Breakfast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm saying, bro. Everything gotta have an 808 behind it. Most people who grew up in the church know this as truth. What do y'all think? Y'all mad, but he said what needed to be said. You just, you know, study, you go to school, you, you, and then you just become a pastor, like you become a manager at, you know, Publix or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and that's, that's unfortunate. Wait. Be so mad, but he said what needed to be said. You just, you know, study, you go to school, you, you, and then you just become a pastor, like you become a manager at, you know, Publix or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and that's, that's unfortunate for a lot of people who invest their, you know, uh, money, time, attention, and their soul into people who they believe are literally called from God. I don't believe uh, a lot of pastors are. I think I think it's a system now, oh God. It's a system, everything is a system and systems work with or without God. So I think the institution of church is whack. I think how church is ran is whack. I think the religious system and structure is whack. I don't subscribe to it even though I grew up in it, I benefited from it, but I learned I just, I don't think that was a, I don't think that was a platform to be having those type of conversations. What's this one? Things the black church is going to get mad at me for saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Man, y'all check this out. I think it's a system now. Oh God. Hold on. I always see this guy, but I'd never like sat down and watched one of his reactions before. Let me see what he's going to say. So he's reacting to the same clip that we just watched. 
The people are not about serving and loving the people. Listen, y'all, I'm going to make this as simple and plain as I possibly can. Simple and plain as I possibly can because Ty Trippin is Ty Trippin. Here's the deal. When you have made your living, when you've made your entire living off of the black church, when you are one of the biggest gospel stars ever, and you've made your living off the black church, when you've fallen into sin, but it was yet the black church that picked you up and loved you and said, come on back in, bro. When you have now set yourself up as a pastor of a black church, you cannot, and I mean you cannot, go on a national syndicated show as big as the Breakfast Club, the biggest, with over 70 plus million people listening in. The majority, young people from the ages of 18 to maybe 35, and say that the black church is whack. You can't say that. I can say that. You can't say that. You can't say that. I just... Hold on. I guess he responded to it. I think the institution of church is... Oh my goodness gracious. Was there a response? I still, I, I... Okay, hold on. He responded. I guess he re uh, Ty responded to it. Let me see if I can find his, his response. Let me see if I can find his response without an 808 in the background. Because, <laughs> bro, I'm not trying to get a copyright strike. I, I, you know what I mean? Come on. God. I'm learning that God is not the church. Oh, he posted this on his. Now, oh God, it's a system. Everything. Is... Yeah, bro, this is exactly what I'm saying. This is like the perfect comment right here. Lady inspiration. So Lady Inspiration said, I absolutely understand what he's saying. However, saying this on this platform is highly irresponsible. That's exactly how I feel as well. It, you don't need to say that on that platform. It's like, it's just, you, you know those people in your life where you get into certain, like, you know, you might be in a, a certain social situation and your friend or your brother, your sister, whoever it might be. They start talking to somebody and saying some some stuff to the wrong person. And it's like, bro, why are you saying that to them? Like, I get it. I understand what you're saying. But why are you saying that to them right now? That doesn't. That's not it. <laughs> that's not it. Hold on. I want to see. I guess he responded, but I can't find his response. I'm on Twitter right now. Let me see. Uh, my goodness gracious. This is what happens when you uh, just, you know, turn the camera on. <laughs> this is what happens when you just turn the camera on and just hope that everything's going to work out. <laughs> um, What is this? We knew it was coming. I just didn't think it would be from this man. Pastor Mike Jr. rebukes Ty Tribbett and what he said about the church being whack. He said Ty Tribbett was ir- Yeah, we know that already though. Okay, I don't know. I guess he didn't respond. Anyway, like I said, I understand what he's trying to say. There's a lot of churches out here. There's a lot of pastors out here that probably shouldn't be pastors. Um, there's a lot of churches who are just essentially like a, a, a Vegas res residency, you know, like a lot of these churches are acting like a Vegas residency and I get it. Um, and look, Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. And a lot of people get into the churches and they get hurt. They get church hurt. They meet the wrong person. They meet the wrong pastor, the wrong leader, whatever it is. 
And then they take that experience and they act like that's a representation of God's character when it's not. That's just people being people. But like I said, the platform that he said it on, it was very irresponsible for him to say that on that platform, in my opinion. All right, let's get to the next story here. Um, what we got? Jackie Hill Perry. Okay, let's watch that Jackie Hill Perry video. This might be a nice uh, little switch up. Well, this kind of is like almost a similar topic to what we were talking about, actually. Um, so I don't know exactly what this video is about. I seen it come across my timeline um, on YouTube and I saved it because it just looked like something that I wanted to watch. <laughs> it looked like something that I'd be interested in. Um, this is Jackie Hill Perry. This is a clip from uh, Shaping the Culture podcast. And it's like literally what we were just talking about. The title of this clip is Some of Your Pastors Are Trash. Let's just get straight into it. To say, I'm going to need you to honor a pastor or a leader that you actually have access to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been wondering how me and Preston can do better at that. Yeah, like, yeah. But also, a lot of these people, pastors are trash, so I'm also conflicted. <laughs> What is wow, that everyone? was loud. I'm sorry. Back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so loud. Okay, let me see if I can skip through this part. We'll go here. One of the things that I have a grievance with, um, with the church today and, and church culture um, is celebrity culture. Celebrity culture within mm -hmm. the church. And I, you know, I, I've shared this with Preston many times. It's something that I've really, man, I've been so blessed by you and Preston in this. Um, you guys push back against that and you guys do what you can to be as normal as possible and approachable, mm. approachable. I've never felt that you guys were out of reach. You know, you guys are kind, yeah. you guys are hospitable, like even open up your home, mm. all of that good stuff. And I wanted to ask you, why do you think today in church culture, you know, we desire fame and, you know, you know why is celebrity culture running rampant in the church? When, when I yeah. think about the first century church, what made them so distinct is because there was no other institution where men and women could come, where Jew and Gentile mm -hmm. can come, rich or poor can mm -hmm. come. Jesus through the mm -hmm. cross had evened out the playing field. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like today in our context, we're, we're not, we're, we're trying to create division by giving people status yeah. when it's a really good question. That's not yeah. God's heart. And so how do you feel about that? And, and how have you resisted celebrity culture? I read this book called, uh, the immortality. Um, it's, I don't remember what it, it was a book written in the 90s about uh, it's not a Christian book, but a, around the concept of celebrity and fame and mm -hmm. why it exists and how it's actually like a new phenomenon that uh, started really when TV started, mm -hmm. because there, that something happened to culture when you could see a person. Yeah. and have a parasocial relationship with them where you felt like you knew them just yeah. because you know their face, you know their voice, you know their their demeanor, but you don't actually know them. And so it's it's something around that. So I think social media has probably just taken it to a whole nother thing, yeah. a whole nother level, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, think, I think as long as sin is in the earth, there will be celebrity mm -hmm. because there will be favoritism. Mm -hmm. There will be a lifting up of some people and a putting down of other people. You even got Paul dealing with that. And um, I think Corinth, you know, like they're like, oh, I follow Paul and yeah. I follow Apollos. And he's like, hey, like, chill out. I'm just, he's just planting. I'm just planting and God over here watering. So I'm gonna right. need you to give all the glory and the energy to him. So That's I great. think it's a reality. Um, I think my heart has been, how do I steward? Because I also think God does give influence. That's right. And so how do I steward that influence in such a way right. um, that God is honored? Yeah. But also how do I not hold on tightly to it? Mm. And so I think one way to not hold on tightly to it is to be generous with your influence. Mm. And so that's why I make it my business to, when I had Glory Conference, to share my platform with people that no one knew. Mm. 
mm-hmm. but was just as get, gifted and just as knowledgeable and just as necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think another way is to retreat as often as possible. Yeah. And so in Luke, uh, I don't know what chapter, in Luke it says with Jesus, it says, as the report of him grew more and more, he would withdraw to desolate places and pr- pray. Mm-hmm. I think that's interesting that they yeah. said, no, the more famous he got, the more he would go away into hiding. Wow, wow. And I think, so I think as mm. influencers, you have to have Sabbaths away from your phone, yeah. away from posting, away yeah. from giving into this feeling of, no, I got to post. I got to, you know, I got to post content. Uh-uh. No, <laughs> trust God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if, if you lose 10,000 followers, so what? You know yeah, God. Yeah. Um, mm. I also have been curious of how to motivate people back into their local churches Mm, yeah. because I kind of think that's our responsibility Mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to need you to honor a pastor or a leader that you actually have access to. Yeah. 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 Well, let me just finish her point. Well, let me let her finish her point before I say something. I've been wondering how me and Preston can do better at that yeah, like yeah. but also a lot of these people pastors are trash so i'm also conflicted <laughs> <laughs> it's like i don't want you to esteem my word higher than your local church pastor but your local church pastor might actually be bad yeah. so i don't know yeah but can I, I can i tell a story about that actually please <laughs> so, uh <laughs> i so yeah preston and i we did a few live podcast shows and then we ended it off in atlanta and mm-hmm. i had shared with preston you know i think i want to check out I won't say the name of the church, a, a particular church. Mm-hmm. And he's like, don't do that. Come to where we're at, you know? And I was like, okay, yes. I'll do that. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I went to your guys' church and I will say, Jackie, like, I'm not going to put nobody on blast. The message was great. But I, I remember I, I remember thinking, like, I would have rather heard Jackie preach <laughs> today. Uh, but to to see you and Preston and your kids, your whole family Mm -hmm. just submitted to the teaching of someone else and to be in the local context. Like, I think you're already doing it by modeling it, you know, um, Mm, by being, being like, I I didn't know I need to see, I needed to see that, you know, but just being in church with you guys and seeing you worship together as a family, um, Mm. was, was beautiful. And I, and I get the, the, the conflict. What, what do you think is the solution? Because one thing I do want to do is, you know, we want to encourage people to be planted in the local church, but we also want to encourage pastors and teachers to be faithful. Um, yeah. You don't, you don't got to be as charismatic. Or you got you to be super charismatic. Yeah. But, you know, I do think that we have to be faithful. And that's something that me and my preaching team hold one another accountable to. Like, hey, we don't want to waste anybody's time. People are driving 20, yeah. 30 minutes to get here. Is it going to be worth it? And I don't know if that's even the right way to look at it, but we do yeah. little things to grow in our gift and to be as faithful as mm-hmm. we can because we know mm-hmm. eternity is at stake. Mm. And so what mm-hmm. would be your encouragement to pastors and young leaders who want to, who are more tempted to entertain than to be faithful? Mm. Ooh, we, bro. Read second Timothy, first and second Timothy. <laughs> uh, you yeah. can tell I've been. Yeah. Chewing on that th- those books, but yeah, God loves you. Mm. He really does, yeah. and He cares for you, and He yeah. and He sees you. Yeah, and so when you entertain people instead of edifying, instructing, guarding, shepherding, leading in a holy way, you grieve God's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are really because that's selfish. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you you become like the shepherds in Ezekiel who are just feeding themselves yeah. instead of feeding the flock. Mm. And so I think confess it if that's a temptation. I think it's a temptation for all of us. It's a temptation mm. for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think God is is safe enough to hear that because He already knows it. Yeah. But He also can grace us and sanctify our motives mm. so that in the teaching, in the preaching, in the leadership it really becomes an act of worship yeah. and therefore service. Yeah. Um, that's good. And so I think that's what, I think that's what faithfulness has to fall back on. Like, how do I say it? I, like, for example, I was talking to a person, he was asking me advice for someone whose wife is moving in a particular way that's not healthy. Mm. And I was like, I think the wife has to see that how she interacts with her husband 
is an extension of her relationship with God. Mm, if yeah, she sees yeah. them as separate, mm -hmm. then it's easier for her to do. Yeah. So in the same way, if yeah. I really don't see that my self-serving techniques mm. are an extension of my worship mm. or lack thereof, yeah. then it's easier to do it. Yeah. But if I, if I have a reverence for God, then I enter that pulpit and I enter this, these Bible studies and I enter these small groups with a sobriety. Because mm. um, I think God cares about that. That was really good. Let me pull something up real fast. Um, let me read this real fast. From the Bible. <laughs> From the Bible. A lot of y'all not going to stick around to hear the Bible. A lot of y'all will. But. A lot of y'all won't, but I think this is, well, the whole Bible is good. I was going to say, I think this is a good, you know, piece of scripture, but the whole Bible is incredible. Second Timothy four ESV version. It says, preach the word, preach the word. It says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Jeez. Let me say that one more time. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober minded, endure suffering, do the work of an, of an, oh my goodness. <laughs> do the work of an in of an evangelist. Oh my gosh. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Preach the word. So many of these churches, and this is this, here's the difference. I think we can have these conversations because we're family. We're brother, we're brothers and sisters. And this is where I think this differs. This type of conversation differs from. The conversation that uh, Ty Tribbett was having on, on the Breakfast Club, because who you're having the conversation with and the spiritual maturity of those individuals that are consuming the words that are coming out of your mouth. There's a lot of pastors, there's a lot of churches 
who simply aren't preaching the word enough. They're using entertainment. They're using skits. They're using secular music. They're using everything except the word of God on Sunday. And then what they'll do is they'll, they'll sprinkle in a little bit of scripture in an attempt to validate the message. But all the time up until that point, the message was not led by the Holy Spirit. But you're just adding a little bit of scripture just to try to validate all the crazy actions that you did before that. And just like the scriptures say, it says, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. The, now more than ever, I think we're living in that time. And one of the primary reasons, well, there's a lot of reasons, but I think number one is like, we've always had a very short attention span. Even before social media, before cell phones, before the internet, humans just had a very poor and short attention span. Now you add in social media, you add in television, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, you add in all these additional distractions. People just don't have the willpower they don't have the discipline to pick up their Bible, to study for themselves, or to find a church that leads with the word of God and not with entertainment. Because we're constantly on our phones all day long. We're constantly distracted all day long. We're constantly getting this hit of dopamine all day long that we feel like in every situation in our life, even in the church, that that has to continue. And then on top of that, it's spiritual warfare. Distractions are not coming from God. Distractions are coming from the enemy. God is not going to put it on your heart to be distracted. That's going to come from the enemy. God is going to put it on your heart to be disciplined and to sacrifice, to sacrifice your emotion of, oh, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like listening to this. God's going to put it on your heart to be a living, a living and a walking sacrifice. The enemy is not going to do that. The enemy wants you distracted. The enemy wants you intoxicated. The enemy wants you drunk in your own emotion, in your own flesh. And then what happens? You accumulate for yourself teachers who fit exactly what you're looking for as opposed to what God is trying to speak to you. And this is a conversation I had the other day. I was talking about like William Murphy and I was reacting to that video that he was talking about um, how he would do it all over again. If he, if he had the opportunity to do the swag surf all over again, that he would do it all over again because 150 people got saved. And so to him, that's justification to be living sinful in the church because 150 people came to Christ. And I was saying like, you know what? Some people are good at the business of church. They're good at growing a congregation. They're good at acquiring finances. They're good at getting a building and finding, you know, really, you know, good real estate, you know, in good areas. And they're, they're good at doing all of that. They're good at the business of church, but the Holy Spirit is not in that building. And God did not tell you to open up another building. But some people are just good at the business of church. And now we have all of these churches. And I don't think church, I think church is, is an amazing thing when it's led by the Holy Spirit. But we have all of these churches and we have all of these pastors 
pastors. We have all of these pastors who may or may not be in it for the wrong reasons, may or may not be called into ministry, but they're in it and they have a congregation and people are showing up every Sunday and they got to deliver a message. That's the world that we live in. It's never been easier to accumulate a crowd of teachers that will tell you exactly what you want to hear, exactly when you want to hear it. A lot of these churches are very comfortable. There's not very many instances where there's a challenge a true challenge that's rooted in scripture, most of the time, a lot of these churches are just in it for the virality. They're trying to do the crazy thing so that they can go viral, so that more people can know about their church, so that they can increase their numbers, so that they can increase their tithes, so that they can increase their profits, and so on and so forth. But I think now more than ever, we just have to have discernment and we just have to be able to recognize who's in it for the right reason and who's not. And ultimately, like I said in the previous story about Ty Tribbett, I understand what he was trying to say. Just the wrong environment to say it in. It's the wrong room to say that in. But I understand it. Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. It, it, it starts in your heart. It starts at home. It starts in your heart. It starts at home. You should be in the word on a daily basis. You should be worshiping on a daily basis. You should be praying on a daily basis. You should be seeking Christ for yourself and wanting that for other people on a daily basis, not just on Sunday when you show up to church. And when you're doing those things on a daily basis, on a daily basis, it's going to increase your discernment. It's going to increase your discipline. And it's going to increase your appetite for truth. And that's going to allow you to recognize what churches and what pastors should be avoided. And which ones are truly walking in the calling that God gave them. I don't know. I feel like I went in a circle. <laughs> I probably could have said that a lot shorter, but... I'm also kind of tired, so that's how it came out. Um, what else we got? Oh my gosh, this video is just. I didn't. I didn't mean to plan this video like this. This is just kind of how it came. Um, but I guess we could talk about. I don't even really want to talk about it for real. But I guess we can talk about the Mike Todd stuff. Um, okay, let's talk about the Mike Todd stuff. Um, I saw this on TikTok. I think Mike Todd was getting a haircut. Um, in church. And he's doing this series where he's talking about um, the fruits of the spirit. And um, in this particular message, and I listen, I tried to watch it because I understand that I will watch a clip and I won't even really get the full context of a clip sometimes. And I'll just run with that clip. I tried to watch the full message. I just, I really couldn't get through it. 
I really couldn't get through it just to keep it real. Um, but let me play this clip and I'm going to play some other clips as well. And then we'll, then we'll have a conversation. All right. As an illustration of what God's going to do in our lives. And I'm going to get a haircut on stage in front of you, something that is usually done in private. Well, I mean, that's not, <laughs> hold on. Um, this, <laughs> did you hear that lady? Hold on. I'm going to do it. Open. She said, this is so good. Okay. Normally when you get haircuts, unless you just got a bag and unless you're rich and you're a celebrity, haircuts are not done in private. Like you go to the barbershop and it's in public and everyone's getting a haircut. But maybe he's talking about for himself because he might have like a barber who comes to his house and cuts his hair. Um, but nonetheless, I'm 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 nitpicking on that. I, I, I'm nitpicking. All right, but let's continue. I'm tired. As I'm tired. <laughs> Hold on, I'm tired. Let me get a sip of water real quick. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, let's watch this illustration. Illustration of what God's gonna do in our lives. And I'm gonna get a haircut on stage in front of you, something that is usually done in private. I'm gonna do it openly. She said, this is so good. He said he's going to get a haircut on stage as an illustration to what God's going to do in your life. And this woman said, this is so good. Okay. One of you so that you can see the benefit of a fresh cut. Um, Aaron, my barber and friend is going to come. Y'all give it up for Aaron real quick as he comes now. Uh, this is my dog, and um, he, I'm going to let him set up, but he is actually terrified of what we're about to do. Because what I'm about to do is very dangerous. Because the level of passion that I preach with, and the level of wanting you to get it, um, really affects potentially the way that somebody um, could actually cut my hair and, and this is not rehearsed or planned or practiced this is about to be very fresh but i want you to know from the scripture watch this point write it down i'm gonna preach this whole time while he's cutting me he got the brother how are you feeling right now are you feeling feeling you're feeling great our friendship is on the line um, write this down. You're getting cut either way. You're getting cut either way. You about to, no, I don't, no, 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 not this black thing. Today is watermelon. I don't want this. Use my cake. Somebody in the, somebody in the comments. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hold on. Somebody said, Psalmist Nicole Richmond said, we're tired, sir. I'm very tired of these conversations, but they keep popping up. So let's have them, I guess. But it's it's kind of exhausting because It goes back to literally what we were just talking about in the in the last story um, with Jackie Hill Perry. Second Timothy four, preach the word. Preach the word. And like I said, I I I get it. I understand. I didn't watch the whole message. And I'm just watching one clip, but I don't need all of this. And it kind of makes you think, and it, and, it, and it begs the question, how much preparation is going into the illustrations 
and how much of that time could be used to just study and then to present what God was speaking to you in your study time to your congregation as opposed to present a fancy new illustration of you getting a haircut, you know? There we go. Got to be on brand. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say you're getting cut it either way. This is God's process. Cutting is God's process of eliminating what isn't producing fruit. And it's also his way of expanding what is producing fruit. So if you don't embrace God cutting you, you are not actually getting the best out of what you have. Yeah. And one cut is going to cause you pain. Remember the scripture says, anybody who's not producing fruit, he cuts them off and throws them away. But the people who are producing fruit, he cuts them so that they can have more fruit. What I found out is one cut is full of pain and the other cut is full of promise. What I'm trying to get everybody in this room under the sound of my voice to realize is God in 2024, when you yell by faith, more fruit in my marriage, more fruit in my finances, more fruit in my business, more fruit in my family. He says, let me grab my scissors. Are you ready to be cut? The thing that really brought me a lot of peace, because when I was asked that by the Holy Spirit, am I ready to get cut? My answer was no. Because all my life, cut has been associated with something that is either bad, hurtful, painful, or, or an accident that could end deadly. Uh -uh, don't, don't play with them scissors since you're young. So that's one clip. I don't even know if I have another clip. I don't even know if I have another clip. Is it this one? What's up, brother? You good? What's your name, man? Alan. Alan, nice to meet you, bro. What's that baby? That baby like orange juice. That baby got a chain on. That baby need an orange. Look. Baby, two days old with a chain. Black people. Here we go. You want an orange? Where y'all go to school? Nowhere. Nowhere. You look young. You, but you, 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 you are blessed. <laughs> What's up, B? Here you go. What's up, fam? You good? It's good to see you. You want fruit? Your daddy, get, he want hit the fruit, dad. I'll give you another one. What's up, Vic? You be telling me to eat fruit all the time. Come on. It's my trainer right here. Take all this fruit. What's up, Big Daddy? You should be able to see the impact of my life. Not by where I tell you I've been. Oh, it's dark on the camera. It doesn't matter where I'm at. You can see my fruit. <laughs> oh, you want some? He said, over here, over here. Do you see what happens? When you start to produce fruit, you become desirable. I haven't stopped to watch anybody eat the fruit. I just produce it and drop it off. At the gym, at the job, when I, wherever I go, my life should be producing fruit. The saddest part about this moment right now are there are thousands of people around me that desire the fruit but the bag is empty mm. so until i flipped it over nobody didn't even knew that i still didn't have any fruit and this is the season where god's exposing people he's turning the bags over saying that marriage looked good on instagram no fruit that business 
They act like they drive a Lamborghini. They in so much debt. No fruit. No fruit. So what happens when the church tells the world, come and see our Jesus? No fruit. Come and meet the God that changed my life. Didn't he change your life 15 years ago? Yes. What has happened since then? Nothing. I just carry around my fruit sack. I judge other people for not bearing fruit. Your fruit should be riper than that man of God. Where have you dropped off any fruit? I know. From now on, I'm not going to try to prove anybody wrong. I'm going to just say this small phrase in my head. Look at my fruit. People can say anything they want about this church. I'm not perfect. I mess up daily. I'm still trying to figure out how to be a pastor. If anybody wants to take my position, you can have mm. I wish I would have ended that clip. That was getting kind of interesting. I'm still trying to figure out how to be a pastor. At least he's honest. Can we talk about Mike Todd real quick? Real quick, I get on TikTok this morning and there are two videos of Mike Todd going viral. I'm only gonna address one of them because the other is just like typical Mike Todd shenanigans and yeah. antics. The video that I'm talking about is of Mike Todd seemingly talking to his congregation based on the responses of the peanut gallery in the background. He is seemingly talking to the congregation. He's looking directly at the camera and he is saying another staff member of Transformation Church left the church because God called them to. And I'm not dramatizing the air quotes. He literally says, because God called them to. And after all these years of us knowing each other, they couldn't even, you know, justify it with a real response. Like, we need the real response. The red flags with this man are flying. They are really flying. And you were talking to someone who used to be Transformation Church down okay especially during covid mike todd was the only person that i was listening to i was only watching transformation church like i was locked in all i'll say is this there is no world where a pastor should be getting in front of the congregation and shading another member of the congregation for making a decision to leave a church there's also no reason a pastor should get in front of the church and publicly mock what someone believes god has told them ever <laughs> also don't understand why mike todd is acting confused because as someone who is not a staffer of the church I believe that Mike Todd has given people a lot of reasons to want to step away from the church. If people want to focus on actually learning the Bible and learning the word and not so much the theatrics of it all, like yeah. maybe it was you spitting on your brother's face. Mm. That Easter service, I remember a lot of people were upset about it. Their other video that went viral this morning is him pouring syrup and whipped cream all over the Bible. Mm. Like, there's reasons. And you can argue how effective his tactics are all day till you're blue in the face. Like some people love it, some people don't. It's I honestly think it's a style preference. I will say this. The video that I'm addressing of him calling out that member of the staff is dangerous for two reasons. Number one, to me, it shows that he's leading with a lot of ego. And I don't think that that ever ends well when you are leading a church. Because what happens is that people see that you're leading with ego and you're not leading with god's direction mm. and then people actually step away from the church this actually happened to me i was listening to transformation church during covid religiously and then i just kind of a couple of things just kept happening with mike todd that i was like i'm gonna actually just take a step back from this but i didn't like step into a different church it took me a couple of months to actually be like, okay let me try church again because i had felt like i'd put so much time and energy into mike todd for just him to disappoint me and that's something that i've had to kind of like check myself on is that like Christianity is about God, not a pastor. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that is like what you're at danger for. Secondly, getting in front of a congregation and shaming anyone for leaving the church, it sounds a lot like a different term that I won't even say. And I'm not saying that if you listen to Transformation Church, you should stop, but I am saying just be careful because mm -hmm. the video that I saw of him shading that staff member did not sit well with me at all. Sounds a little cultish. I want to, let me see if I can find that video. Mike Todd, staffer. Mm. Mike Todd, I think it's this one right here. 
Another staff member just left and all they said was it's because God called them somewhere else. Oh my goodness. She was not lying. The air quotes is a little much. Another staff member just left and all they said was it's because God called them somewhere else. After, after six years, you can't even tell me the real reason. But you do subliminal Instagram posts? They should have left a long time ago. Huh. It sounds kind of cultish. And that's kind of what happens sometimes when you have somebody who's so charismatic. And you have somebody who's so likable and who is naturally funny and good with words and just naturally just can connect and can relate with people, um, you start to let certain things slide. And I think that's what a lot of people are allowing to happen in Transformation Church. A lot of this, a lot of this stuff, and, and I could sit here until, like, y'all, some of y'all be telling me, and y'all be sitting here until y'all, like, blue in the face, just telling me, like, you know, watch the full sermon, get the full context, do that. Like, but it, some things I don't necessarily need to 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 see the full background as to why you poured syrup on the Bible. As to it's just some it's you know what I'm saying. It's like some things. It's just like you just find a different way to get your point across. It's so much theatrics. It's so much entertainment. It's so much. It just doesn't make sense. Is there a full video to this? Let me see. Another staff member just left and No, that's not it. Hold on. There's let me try to find one more video. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. What's her name? 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 Oh. Hold on, I'm trying to find a video real fast. Um, is it this one? It might be this one, let me see. All they said was it's because God called them somewhere else. Okay, so this is my very first time ever speaking on Mike Todd, and I've never wanted to give him any attention, I'm going to be real, because I felt like everybody else has already, all the time, you know, given him enough attention. But concerning this matter, maybe I guess this is the first time I felt led to speak. Number one, he is dead wrong to even sit here and, you know, try to put in some air quotes about what someone told him that God told them. And then the guy that I got this snippet from was even saying that it was wrong for the person to say what they said, basically, and that they should have given him an explanation when really it was nothing wrong with what the person said to Mike saying, yes, I'm leaving the church because God called me somewhere else. God is not man and man is not God. We owe no man an explanation but God. It was nothing wrong with what that person had told him. Nothing wrong with saying what they said at all. So to even sit here and act like it was wrong and that God can't tell people, hey, move on. God can't tell people, hey, don't give an explanation. God can't tell them, hey, this is all you need to say. Or God can't tell them, hey, this is what I'm just telling you and I'm not even explaining to you. And this is all you'll need to know for right now. But this is where I'm moving you. Really? Really saying God can't say that? That's that's wrong. I'm sorry. And I don't agree with that. Now, speaking on Mike's preaching in general, he was never for me. I remember when someone first showed me him like three or four years ago and I was like mm -mm, because I've never liked like kitty teaching like I felt like his teaching were for teenagers like no kidding like it wasn't even about his popularity or not I don't even know if he was that popular at the time I really don't even believe he was like as big as he is now as a name but he was getting there and he was getting known or something and then this person that was showing me was like you know I always listen to him but I looked at how they walk and I'm like if you always listen to him and I really don't feel moved by him I really feel like I shouldn't be listening to him because your walk hasn't changed I'm not even trying to be rude about this person but I'm like the way I see you living you don't seem convicted at all about anything that you do you know and if he makes you feel comfortable you know however you do it I'm not trying to base their actions on the preachers because that can be anybody a preacher can be a preacher but 
I just wasn't feeling led by him. You know, I was just kind of like, I feel like worldly people being comfortable with certain preachers tells me everything that I need to know. You know, there's no conviction there and there's something not be, really being said or, you know, it's too playful. Um, and I don't like that cookie cutter stuff. I like very nitty gritty, very mature, very deep um, and, and filled with wisdom teachings. Like you use the most articulate advanced wording and that's just me. But other than that, when you go toddler or like specifically are speaking to like young people or teenagers, sometimes even young adults, I feel like I'm a little bit more, although I'm a young adult, I feel like I, I need to hear more than that. I need to hear it like I'm 50 years old, but whatever. Even as a teenager, when my mom would try to drop me and my siblings off at youth church, I used to be like, uh-uh, I want to go to the big building. I don't want to go to the youth service. She was like, no, you guys need to hear this. And I'm like 14. I'm like, no, it's just too kitty. Like I need to hear more. So partially just me. I'm not saying something is wrong exactly. I haven't followed his teachings at all. Like I haven't even really, I've just seen little things that he've said that I haven't fully agreed with or haven't really felt, you know, really connected with. So that's my whole thing. But overall, I do think that what he was doing was wrong, you know, trying to quote someone and low key come for them, you know, because he was hurt by them leaving. Um, I understand being hurt, but I just feel like for you to act like that, that was a wrong thing for them to say. I think that that was childish and not 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 really of God. Sorry. I'm gonna have to move on from that one, Mike. But God bless you and may you grow from these experiences. May I think, you know, I, I I always say that I don't wanna talk about the Mike Todd stuff and like I'm done with it and stuff like that. But I think subconsciously I'm I'm very much interested in 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 what is gonna pan out because I used to watch Transformation Church. And I used to feel as if the teaching was profitable. And this was a time where I was very early on in my faith walk. And I didn't really know. I didn't really know anything. <laughs> I didn't know anything. I just would, I was just going on YouTube, literally typing in sermon and then transformation church would pop up or elevation, Tony Evans, Joyce Meyer, those are like the most popular people, Joe Olstein, all of those people would pop up, right? And this is like very early on in my faith walk. And just naturally, out of those options that I saw, I was just gravitated towards Mike Todd because like he's a cool looking dude, black guy, like, you know, something I could relate to. Um, and I would I was watching it very early on and i felt like wow this is this is helping me this is you know teaching me new things it's it's challenging me um but then over time the shift started to happen and i started to seek more i started to seek more meat i feel like his teaching is more on this on the side of like milk you know what I'm saying? I started to seek more like solid food, um, things that really challenged me, things that really gave me deeper context into the scriptures, things that really taught me the deeper historical, um, you know, meaning and the deep, deeper historical facts related to the Bible and just the theology and the, the different, um, just all that different stuff. I got way more interested in that and way less interested in just like the illustrations and the entertainment. So I think subconsciously I'm still kind of invested, even though I say I'm not, because at one point in time, I used to watch Transformation Church pretty often. And I'll say it and I'll say it again. Like, I want nothing but the best for them because there's so many people that still go to that church. There's so many people that watch every single Sunday. Just look at their numbers on YouTube. Um, and I want, the, I want those people to be saved and I want those people to walk righteously and I want those people to, um, to truly know Jesus Christ, you know, but it just, it, it just looks off. There's just so much about it that just looks off, you know, um, Let's go to the next story. This is like a total switch up. 
This is like a complete switch up. Complete switch up. All right. Uh, Drake Bell. Very famous uh, actor, child actor. Um, you know, he was in that show, Drake and Josh. Did y'all ever watch Drake and Josh? Um, look, I'm going I'm to expose myself. That used to be like one of my favorite shows. I don't know why. I look at it now and like I, I try to watch like episodes now and it makes me cringe. Um, but at one point in time, it used to be one of my favorite shows. Um, he said that one of the acting coaches assaulted him. Let me play this video and then we'll have a conversation. They hear that Brian Peck was a sexual predator. It made me wonder immediately about who was being hurt. Who it is, when it happened, where it happened, I have no idea. It wasn't dealing with anybody on the shows or anything, right? It was a child actor. On one of our shows? Yes. He, 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 he knows something. That reaction was a little much. That's like, that's a reaction like you know something. Mm. I guess the reason why... I guess the reason why, what is going on with my YouTube? I'm looking at the recommendations on my YouTube. I'm like, who is watching stuff on my YouTube? Um, I guess the reason why I'm interested in this story is there's so many stories like this where we see in Hollywood, even look at like the Diddy stuff. That spirit of lust, that, that spirit of perversion it's so prevalent in Hollywood. And I think we can learn a lot from it. Because typically, that spirit of lust and that spirit of perversion, it's used as a mechanism to control people. And it's used as a mechanism to shame people. And we see so many stories in Hollywood where, you know, so XYZ producer, you know, abused this actor or actress in exchange for giving them a role on a movie or on a TV show. It's used as a tool to manipulate. It's used as, as a tool to keep somebody in bondage. And I think we can just look at it from the standpoint of the tactics of the enemy. The enemy is going to use the same temptation, the same spirits of lust, of perversion, and he's going to try to get us to fall into the same traps, into the same scenarios. Because the enemy knows, number one, how effective it is, and he knows how detrimental that it can be to somebody's emotion and to somebody's spirit. Because oftentimes, especially when we're talking about children, when children are abused in that kind of way, it has lasting effect on them. It can push them into a life of perversion, whether it be homosexuality, transgenderism, gender confusion. 
or it could push them in the direction of wanting to do the same type of action to other people because that was done to them first. All around, it's a cycle of sin and it's a cycle of death, really. And I don't think it's a secret that we see these type of things happening at that level, at that Hollywood level. Because the enemy knows that if he can control media, movies, entertainment, television, then he doesn't have to do too much because he can just sit back and he can let the programs program us. You know what I'm saying? So number one, I think we need to be mindful of what we're, number one, we need to be mindful of what we're consuming. And it's so sad because it's like even a show that is made for children or that is made for, you know, teenagers. Those spirits of lust, those spirits of perversion are still prevalent in those spaces. I remember, um, what's that one show? I think I saved a clip. Hold on. Um, so this is kind of a spooky clip. This is kind of spooky. Ah, I can't play it. This is the voice. So this is the guy who is allegedly accused of uh, abusing Drake Bell. Y'all remember this voice? Hold on. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. This is not it. It's a different one. Um. Oh, I didn't save it. Or maybe it's on Twitter. Let me see if it's on Twitter. You are wonderful, God. Okay, let's see if it's on Twitter. No, it's not on Twitter. Um... But I think the interesting thing is like just going back to what I was saying is, you know, when children have these types of encounters and I'm pretty sure he was a child when this happened, like he wasn't like, you know, eight, nine, ten years old. But I'm pretty sure he was like a teenager when he was recording uh, Drake and Josh. Um, the outcomes are never good. And I think he was even accused of assaulting somebody else hold on hold on let me search something real quick i'm about to search something kind of crazy so <laughs> i don't want y'all to judge me okay here it is yeah so here it is um so this is from a story from 2021. So it says that Drake Bell, former Nickelodeon star, gets probation for child endangerment. The former star of Nickelodeon's Drake and Josh pleaded guilty to attempted child endangerment and disseminating mat matter harmful to juveniles in June. When I was 11, I learned that my aunt had a mutual friend who knew the defendant. 
That led to my aunt taking me to meet him for the first time in 2014 when I was 12. When I was 13, I went to him for boy advice. He told me that I was beautiful and that boys were stupid. He then sent me a photo of myself that he had screen capped from my Instagram, telling me that I was, quote, such a cutie. Another instance of creepy behavior happened when I was spending time with him at the age of 14. He told me that he couldn't believe how much I'd grown since he last saw me. He said that I wasn't little anymore and I was, quote, a woman now. When I was 15, I noticed a huge shift regarding his treatment and attitude towards me. When I was younger, he was sweet and actually wanted to talk to me about my life. But at 15, he started sending me messages about how, quote, hot I was. In the summer of 2017, I messaged him, telling him that I was going to see him in concert in the following months. He replied by telling me that he couldn't wait to see me. He also asked me, quote, how old are you now? I told him 15. He then told me to, quote, hurry up, don't smile at me. Not too long after that, his messages to me became blatantly sexual. This eventually led to many months of inappropriate messages and photos being exchanged over Instagram and Snapchat. The photos exchanged included photos of my body. I don't like his reaction. <laughs> like, and I don't know what y'all think about this story. I haven't really like researched this story to kind of give you my full opinion as as like what I think about it. But I don't like his reaction. Like if you if you think she's lying, then give her the respect to tell her side of the story without all the extra pouting and sighing and you know all the extra emotion. Just give let allow her to tell her story, um, and then afterwards go ahead and, and go into your defense and you know defend yourself essentially but i i don't know man you know the book of psalms says that children are a gift from the from the lord i reference that verse a lot my lips are dry i'm sorry i'm putting on chapstick the book of Psalms says children are a gift from the Lord. So if children are a gift from the Lord, we could expect that children are going to be a focus of the enemy when it comes to spiritual attacks. And spiritual attacks can come in many different forms. You never truly know the spirits behind like what your children are watching, what television shows, what movies. You never know. You never truly know the spirits behind what they're watching and what their what their intentions are. But if it's not the Holy Spirit, if it's not the Spirit of God, then it's not a beneficial spirit. So it's just sad to see these children shows nickelodeon shows that i literally grew up on it's sad to see that all the spirits behind those shows were dark and demonic spirits And I think it's even more of a reminder that we need more Christian content, like truly Christian content across the board. Like we need more Christian children shows and movies. We need more, you know, Christian uh, shows and, and, and entertainment for, you know, adults as well. Like we need to have edifying content that we can consume because the fact of the matter is, we, we, we've we already opened up the floodgates. What's the floodgate? We've already opened up all of this technology. We've already been exposed to all of these different avenues to consume content. We can't just close it. Like we're not gonna just be 
completely disconnected from everything and never be on our phones or never watch TV. Like some people can do that, but that's going to be an extremely real unrealistic expectation to think that you could just completely disconnect and that you can completely just disconnect your entire household. Some people can do it, but most of us are not going to be able to do that. So what's the alternative? We need more Christian content that is truly being operated from a pure spirit, more specifically, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Because for too long, we've been putting up with all of this content that is being driven and led by the enemy. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think if I should do some, some of these quick stories that I have. I have a few quick stories, but I don't know how much I really want to get into it. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. I apologize if I was kind of rambling. I am kind of tired. Um, I've been kind of pushing myself a lot to make content and I feel I just feel kind of tired, you know. Um, so I'm gonna get off. I appreciate y'all. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Um, Just remember, we have all authority over the enemy. You know, we see we have these conversations about these different things that are going on on in you know in the world, these different topics, um, and sometimes it's easy to kind of feel weighed down by all the negativity that you see in the world. But just remember, as believers, we have all authority over the enemy, and I think it's good to disconnect. And to not consume so much of this filth that we see that's going on. Um, and if that means disconnecting and maybe you don't watch some of what I'm talking about, then do that. If that's going to be beneficial to your spirit. Because I, I would rather you be spiritually healthy than you just keep watching, you know, what I'm doing. Um, that would be more that it would be more. It would mean more to me that you are spiritually healthy than feeling burdened after these types of conversations, because that's not what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm trying to give you all a different perspective to what's going on on this earth. And I'm also trying to remind you that we have all the authority over all of these dark and demonic spirits that we see that are ruling this earth. The devil is the God of this earth, little G, but we serve the God of the entire universe who literally created all things. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to fear because we serve the one who literally defeated death. Just think about that. Jesus Christ, our God, literally defeated death. There's nothing that can overcome us because our Lord and Savior defeated death. So I understand that we're human and naturally we have emotions and naturally what we allow into our spirit, what we allow into our ears, it affects our heart. So maybe for some of us, what we need to do is to reduce our consumption of the world and increase our consumption of the word of God. And however that looks like in your personal life, take the steps to do that. All right. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm out, y'all.